are. We mentioned the two exp the two relevant experiments were Higgs. That the other experiments are also exciting, but they're not uh, so directly involved in looking for the Higgs. Um, so if we look at Atlas, that's the one that Indiana University is involved with. It is 40, the actual apparatus, which you show, showed a picture of, is 45 kilometers long, 25 meters in diameter, and weighs 7,000 tons. And that whole experiment has 3,000 physicists at 175 institutions in 38 countries. If we look at the, the other experiment called CMS, it's, um, it's estimated they're essentially the same size, 3,600 people, the same number of countries, 38, and instead of 175, 183 scientific institutes. And um, so there are. So this is an example of big science. Each of those experiments has 38 countries, over 170 institutions, and 3,000 or more scientists or physicists involved in them. That's one experiment has a huge number of, is just, uh, that's big. And we can look at the, the US sort of involved budgets. Uh, the total budget of the Department of Energy for particle physics, of which this is a, important, but not, uh, not the only part. The Large Hadron Collider, although it's in CERN in, in, in Europe, it has a significant investment from the US in terms of building the apparatus and funding the people to work on it. Uh, the US Department of Energy particle physics budget is $777 million a year recently. And of course, Atlas and CMS are 6,000 or more people. That will cost you around $500 million a year just to pay the salaries and things like that. Um, now we actually get to the, uh, to the actual topic of this uh, session, which is returning to the Large Hadron Collider. This slide we had before at the top uh, left. We have the actual picture of the accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN which has marked on it the uh, several experiments as CMS, ALICE, ATLAS, LHCB. And then on the right here, we have the actual ATLAS experiment. And we, list, we show people here and point out how much bigger the apparatus is than, than an individual person. Which is why this requires so much effort a uh, coordinated effort from many people, 3,000 people on the ATLAS experiment. We also remind you here, and we'll see this in other contexts, what a typical event looks like. The protons are coming in from the bottom corner and the top corner, and they're colliding in the middle. And you produce here a spray of particles. Most of the particles go forward and back, this, uh, this area here. And here, but some of them go out to the side. And typically, the ones going out to the side are the most interesting particles because they correspond to so called violent or deep collisions. And that's the characteristic of, of interesting events such as the production of a very heavy new particle like the Higgs boson. Now, this analysis, when we wish is the focus of this class is performed on the so-called LHC computing grid, uh, which is a large system of around 200,000 cores uh, spread around the country, with, sorry, around the globe in a three-tier uh, structure. There's some um, level zero, which is CERN itself, the accelerator um, center. There is a tier one, which are national facilities, uh, such as those of Fermilab in the, in the, in the USA or the, probably the Rutherford, and either Desby or the Rutherford Lab in England and so on. And then um, one would have multiple tier two facilities, which are typically university facilities. Indiana has a tier two facility for the ATLAS experiment. And here it points out that CMS, one of the two big experiments, CMS and ATLAS are the two experiments that shared the discovery of the Higgs. CMS has seven tier one, seven country level, and 50 university level facilities contributing to these 200,000 cores, which are busy chugging away, analyzing these events. 
which events correspond is associated with some 15 petabytes of data per year. And the initial data is taken, is then processed, it's supplemented with so-called Monte Carlo data, to enable, which are uh, generated data which you use to get a better feeling as to what's going on and, and look at the um, biases and errors in the experimental analysis. And that sum total of everything is 15 petabytes per year. This was the data we've seen before, and here is the important uh, bump, the Higgs particle. And this is Atlas data looking at the decay of the Higgs into the two photons, which means Atlas looks at all events. It finds events with two appropriate photons, which are ones at high transfer momentum. These are these so-called deep events, which occur very rarely. And then they plot the mass of those two photons, and they see an enhancement at around 126 GeV. Remember, a proton has a mass of 0.98 GeV. Then um, they make a model, which is a smooth background plus a bump, which is called the signal. And that's the solid line, and then the dashed line is the pure background, which is a smooth polynomial. And then they subtract it to get the pure Higgs, and that's seen here. And these, this rather modest looking bump is the Higgs particle, which is, of course, of fundamental importance to science. Because it underlies how how the basic laws of nature are built and, why, and how the fundamental particles interact. This is a rather uh, tr trivial but striking um, uh, picture. It shows the um, screen uh, shot of the uh, physics letters article from the Atlas experiment, which announced the discovery of the Higgs, and Here's the title of the paper. And then below the title of the paper are all the authors listed. And you notice that we start with, this is done alphabetically, we start with AA, and we only get down to BAU at the bottom here. So obviously we have to do C through Z, and that means uh, it's obvious that there are an awful lot of authors on this paper. Um, <coughs> Most other fields would not have, I mean, as far as I know, this field has the most authors per paper. Um, this is just a totally different topic. The, what you see here is a picture which effectively uh, got, you might say, got Feynman his Nobel Prize. Feynman was a brilliant physicist who I used to work with at Caltech. And you can see um, a picture of how a Higgs boson is formed when protons collide. And um, Higgs bosons like to couple with particles of high mass. That's this uh, top quark here. So the two, to two a top quark and a top antiquark collide. They produce a Higgs, which then decays, uh, which um, goes through some uh, virtual loop, again, possibly a top quark or a W boson. And then it finally gives off two photons. An alternative decay mode is into four so-called leptons, where the uh, neutral uh, weak uh, particle, the Z, decays, is produced in pairs, and then decay, each Z decays into two leptons. These uh, diagrams are, are, are not calculable exactly, but they give you, uh, they're drawn because they allow us physicists to um, know what to look for. And that's how our Higgs boson is properly uh, thought of. And if we look at this, um, sorry, properly studied. And if you remember this process, this starts with the very raw data. Um, we sort of automate the, from the raw data to what I call information, which is the set of uh, particles in each event, and the whole list of events with a set of particles in them, maybe with the momenta, uh, an estimate of the type of the particle, and the charge. And then, one has to try to look for Higgs. There one needs to put in a lot of additional physics, because you need to uh, identify which type of events you would look at to find the Higgs. And you also need to understand the experimental apparatus to know where the, what you're seeing is a true signal of a real fundamental particle, or where it might be some sort of accident of, of uh, some background, which is uh, just a product of the experimental apparatus.